lots of have heard has heard me say uh, we only get one of them so let's make it a good one we're never gonna have May 18th 2022 again heck 2022 I'm still processing 2020 but that's neither here nor there we want you to get out there on the trail where time stands still and you're able to us to enjoy uh, creation enjoy the Creator enjoy the animals and enjoy doing something that you love and the thing that makes it horrible is when you don't get the results that you need so we show up here every single wednesday so that you can gain the trust of your animals and get results we are live wednesday may 18th yeah. this is not a recording although we do enjoy those we enjoy the fun things that it allows us to do we're live today my name is dave this is Steve Edwards, and uh, yeah, we're going to have some fun. Steve, how have things gone the last week since we last spoke? Oh, my God, doing okay, Dave. I mean, it's starting to get warm. I was just looking at the thermometer before I come in here. Oh, it don't was do that. 33 on the ground. Yeah. But it was 101 in the shade, so we're good. Yeah, as long. So, folks who have come out to a clinic, they know this. Um, folks who have never come out to a clinic, they don't. It's cooler on the ranch by about four or five degrees than it is in the valley and then on top of that out in the ranch uh you've got a good chance of getting a breeze too whereas in the valley in the in the city area the breeze don't blow the same way so it's it's actually you know a lot easier out on the i mean don't be out there at three o'clock when it's 115 degrees but hey you need to spend a little bit of time in the morning a little bit of time in the evening Enjoy the uh, enjoy the pool like you've got it. So we're going to take mule and donkey questions today, Steve. I know we're changing it up a little bit. I know that uh, you weren't planning on doing that, but we're going to go ahead and do that because that's what the people want. You okay with that today? There we go, partner. Here we that, go. We that's right. Well, let, internet. Let's do it. Let's say hello to a few of our friends who are hanging out already. We've got uh, Kim watching from Vegas. Good to have you here, Kim. Uh, Jana watching from beautiful Wyoming. We've got one of our long timers, Eileen, watching from Nebraska. I've said this before, and I know I'll say it again. I think Eileen was one of the one of the people on our very first broadcast. If it wasn't the first, it was there within the first couple. Good to have you here, Eileen. Misty is watching. Uh, let's see here. Polly is watching from Barnesville, Minnesota. Low 70s, windy, but had a nice ride this morning on Cookie with Steve Edwards Tack. Love it. We love that. Thank you, Polly. Stacy is watching. 81 degrees and beautiful in Colorado today, but expecting snow on Friday and Saturday. Man, wow. We're almost into June here, Stacy. moisture. Oh, man. That'll be... It'll 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 make for a lot of green green there. Yeah. Uh, Dave uh, O'Brien is watching from East Texas, ninety one degrees. Laura from Tennessee, and Jackie from Placidas, New Mexico. All is well here, eighty eight and a little smoky, uh, little smoky here. She says, "Hey, the way this works is first and foremost, you've seen our friends do it already. Please." Put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like in the comments section. Um, we are relational creatures. Uh, one of the things that separates us from the animals is uh, just the relationships and the dynamics that we have that a lot of animals don't enjoy. And that's because God is a very relational God. And so we get to have relationship because of that. So we want to know that you're here. We care about you. Uh, we, uh, we know that it can be really lonely out there in this big world and finding a few friends who love mules and donkeys has been a huge encouragement to us. And we hope that, uh, finding us will be an encouragement to you, but let yourself be known, put your name, where you're watching from and what the weather is like in the comment section so that we can say hello to you, acknowledge you and, uh, just love on you today. The second thing we ask is that you put any and every mule or donkey question in the comment section. We are live right now, so we will see them and we will get to them so you can get out there and get results. And the third thing we ask is that y'all share the broadcast on YouTube and Facebook. Now, the way you do it on YouTube, it's very easy. Number one, click like on the video. Number two, click subscribe to the channel. And number three, Put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like in the comment section. That lets YouTube know that this video uh, is one that folks should see in their feeds too. So it'll help it get recommended. Uh, and then if you're on Facebook, very similar. Click like on the video. Go ahead and click the share button or 
you can tag a friend or family member in the comments section. With that, we're going to hop into our first question of the day. This one comes from Misty. She says, no, oh, Steve, this is a good one. Hey, Misty, just a heads up. Steve's about to get up on a soapbox. So don't take it personal. Know that he has got your best interest in mind. Steve, how do you desensitize a 28-year-old mule for picking up hooves asking from Montana? How do you desensitize that mule, Steve? Well, that word desensitize should be thrown right out of uh, any vocabulary of an equine owner because there's no such thing as desensitize them to something. Uh, let me give you an idea. We got a rattlesnake on a trail. Anybody got a rattlesnake to train with? Oh, wait a minute. We got an elk wanting to be on the trail. We are. Um, anybody got an elk? How do you desensitize? You don't. Okay. How do we train and build a foundation? We do. Okay. Now, the big problem with, with a 28-year-old mule is we've got 28 years of who knows what has been taught to this mule. All right. So you're going to have to build a new foundation. That foundation is very important that you do ground communication. Folks, you cannot overdo ground foundation. About the time you think you've done enough ground, ground communication, you've got to do 10 times more. Get it in your mind, okay? Get it in your mind. When you lead that mule from A to B, like Jackie over in New Mexico, she sent me a picture. She saddled her mule. I don't see it tied to a hitching post. I see the come along rope on the ground, and she got her saddle on the mule with using the come along hitch. It's very important. So uh, the, the come along um, uh, ground communication kit is very important. Now, there is a halter there. I want you to take the halter, and yes, you can adjust it. And then I want you to hang it on a nail and leave it there. All right? It, 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 it's nice to have once in a while, but when you go up to the hitch and rail, you should be able to drop your, your, your lead rope on the ground and ride. If you can trust your mule that much, and he has that much respect for that lead rope, you got yourself one awesome mule, okay? You got to do that. It's important. Uh, so the next part here, uh, let's go back to the come along hitch. Once you get your ground foundation going pretty solid, now it's time to pick up the feet. And uh, Dave, we got uh, several videos. Uh, we got the one video of me picking up the back feet. And remember, folks, it's different with me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have the feel and the timing a little bit because I've done it a couple of times. <laughs> um, so, so you can watch and see what I do, and it'd be good for you, huh, Dave? Absolutely. I just put a link in the comment section, folks. It's to a video called Picking Up the Rear Foot. Um, it's got, as of now, it's got over 27,000 views. It's about nine minutes and 31 seconds long. And one of the things uh, that folks will often think is, oh, they're just editing out the difficult part. They're just editing it out where Steve struggled. And so I put with lots of like, like asterisks at the very top, I wrote, this video is unedited. What you're seeing is exactly how it happened and the steps taken to communicate to the mule are all happening in real time. We did not edit out uh, Steve getting frustrated. We did not edit out the mule continually kicking out and taking his foot away from Steve. We left that all in there because that's how it happened. So go check out that video. If you're on YouTube, do make sure that you subscribe. That's a huge, huge thing. And as a matter of fact, if you have watched this video before, Put in the comment section, say, yes, I have. I know what video you're talking about. Let us know. And if you haven't seen it, put it in the comment section right now. Say, no, I haven't seen it. Go ahead, put that in the comment section. Let us know that you're actually listening to us. And Steve and I are not just yelling back and forth at one another. So great question, Misty. I hope it was very helpful. As a matter of fact, folks don't know this. If you open up the dictionary and you look for the word desensitize, what you're going to see is a picture there of Steve Edwards giving a stern look saying, don't you know desensitize isn't a word. So just a little fun fact right there for you. Kim has the questions. Does how many more rattlesnakes have you caught, Steve? Well, we're only up to five right now as far as here on the ranch. Um, 
the fire department down at Queen Valley has caught quite a few, but right now we're just up to five here right now. Up to five. So five and counting. Of course, there's plenty of people out there that says that's, that's probably five more than I've ever wanted to hear get, about in my entire here they life. Get, uh, they, they get a disease called separation anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Candy is watching. Rainy and cool. Question. Answer. Acquired a wee, weanling mule. Appreciate input on how much to feed. To get him properly started with foundation work is the first step to stand straight. Also, is two fingers rule from the nostril true for horses as well as mules? Candy's been watching Steve Edwards videos. What would you say to Candy, Steve? Yes, the, what you see me do with the mules, you can use on your donkeys, your mules, your horses, and your weanlings, all right? Uh, yes, you, yes, you can. Uh, use that come along hitch and be consistent. What to feed them, okay? Uh, you, you need to go to my feeding uh, article where I talk about feed. And you'll see that there's a, a feed there called Lake and Light. Take the ingredients from that article, go into your feed store, and hey, what do you have that's similar to this? And that'll be a good start. Uh, we, we don't want to develop develop a great big hay belly, and we don't want to develop grass founder. So uh, if you've got some good Timothy hay around there, and here's the thing, have the hay always. Have your hay tested to know what is in that hay. Very, very important to know what's in there. And also have your little meal. You can have him tested to see what vitamins and minerals he needs. How do you test him? Hair, salical, hair follicle sample or a blood test. Your veterinarian can help you out with that. Awesome, very good. I put two links in the comment section. The first one is to a video uh, called Feed Talk. It's an absolutely free video, really great content. Um, from Steve and the folks at uh, um, Lake and Milling. And so uh, you can get that video for free, F-bomb. Those are our favorites. The second thing that I put is a link to the article Steve was talking about. What you're going to find there is um, basically uh, the story behind why mules can't stand prosperity. Uh, a lot of times you're souping them up on rocket fuel and you don't even know it. So it's a little bit of a story of a, of a mule that had to make some adjustments and how how the nutrition adjustment, just like for humans, uh, wound up making uh, just about all the difference in the world. So go get those. Uh, those are absolutely free. It's uh, a little bit of effort that will pay a lot of uh, grand dividends and you'll be really, really happy. Uh, Sandy is watching from Monument, Colorado. Very nice today. And yes, snow on Friday. That's Colorado. It's a big surprise. Myra is watching from Southern California. Breezy, warm weather this week. We're making progress with the Mule Riders Martingale. Hey, that's awesome. We love to hear that. Good to have you here, Myra. Gail is watching from Wisconsin. A little cooler today, around 68, but sunny. Vicky is watching. Ask the question, how long and frequent do you recommend I ride my four and a half year old mule coming back from 90 days with the trainer? I'm thinking two hours and build up from there. What are your thoughts? Thank you, Vicky. From you know, Queen at four Queen. and a half, ride the hair off of them. All right. Ride them, ride them, ride them. Uh, the main thing I want you to do is think about this. When it comes to riding, you know, in my country, lots of mountains and cactus and things like this and, and pretty tough. Uh, but still, you can uh, build muscle. Uh, you can go in and out of trees and build, uh, you know, the uh, raining and this sort of thing. But, you know, uh, two to four hours uh, every other day would be just a, a general average. Sorry about that. I was mid gulp. So, uh, I don't hurt. <laughs> Did for the next 45 minutes. Oh, Hey, for the next 45 minutes, we're going to be here answering mule and donkey questions. If you are just now hanging out, please put your name, where you're watching from and what the weather is like in the comment section. We'd love to say hello. Uh, Ruby is watching from Southeastern Missouri where it's sunny and 80 degrees. Linda, the mule servant and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule in warm, 
Drizzly, rural central Ohio. So happy to see you. Happy to see me. Happy to see Steve. Yep, there we go. Good to have you here, uh, Linda. Laura is watching with Stu in sunny but cool Ontario, Canada. That means we've gone international. Thank you, Laura. Very much appreciated. Cowboy Ken is watching from Connecticut where it's 68 degrees and sunny. Uh, Kim up in Vegas says, Steve, the big guy is still taking pot shots at me. Is that God, the big guy, taking pot shots at you? No. He's getting a lot better about catching and haltering. Putting his first ever fly mask on last week was an event to say the least. So we're making some progress there. Glad to hear it. Right, Steve? <laughs> yeah. Good for him. Good, good. Little good. by little, bit by bit. You'll get it. That's right. Gail says, I just bought my mule in December. Trail riding now with him. Do you recommend... Blah, blah. Do you recommend shoes on all four feet? Absolutely. Okay. When you only shoe the front end, that means the back end will not drive. Now you got to have that motor from the back. When you only shoe the front end, the mule will elevate his head and hollow out his back. So, but what is the number one reason we shoe? The number one reason is because mules have contracted heels. And when they have contracted heels, that means that frog is small and hard and it should be big and fluffy. That's what it should be. So that's the biggest reason. You wanna, you wanna have those shoes fit so that the heels will spread and you've got a wider heel. Steve, I have never shooed my mule, never had a problem. Never well, had a problem. I, I would I would say no, impossible, because those mules will have contracted heels. You didn't think you had a problem, but you didn't have the blood flow up and down that leg. The mule knew he had a problem, but that's the problem. Most of us are only thinking about riding. Oh, look at the mountain over there. Look at the mountain. Oh, my mule tripped. Oh, that's okay. It'll be all right. And then, oh, look at the mountain over there. Look at oh, my mule trip. Oh, it'll be all right. You know, and we're not seeing it. You know, if we could, if we could, if, if it was a tire, we hear the thump, 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 thump. We'd know, okay? But when the mule is tripping or when you see a lot of extra wear on the front of the shoe, but the big thing, folks, how wide is that heel in the back? Okay, that needs to be nice and wide. You want that frog to be big and happy. If the frog is not big and fat and happy and it's narrow and hard, you got problems. Yeah, so I bring that up just because that's something that we hear uh, frequently when we just talk about shoes and the fact that all four need to be have shoes on them. Um, folks will say, well, I've never never done that before. And, and so uh, we'll give you the information. We'll put it out there and we'll say, hey, last 40 years, this is what we've done. This is why, and this is how it's paid off. And you get to make that final decision for you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what Steve says right there, we hear that a lot is, uh, you didn't think you had a problem or you're not aware that you have a problem, uh, but eventually it's going to wind up showing up. And, uh, so many times Steve will hop on the phone with someone and they'll say, my mule's doing that completely unrelated to shooting. My mule's doing this. Well, are you, does he have shoes on? No. Well, there you go, right there. So, um, so yeah, we'll give you the information and let you make the decision on what you want to do with that. Great question there, Gail. Really yeah. appreciate you having here, uh, having having time to join us here, and uh, glad we got to talk about that. Jackie says, "Question: I got Annie on a diet. Currently feeding her six pounds of lake and light and six pounds of grass hay a day. She's fourteen two hands. Is this still too much? She still looks pregnant." Yeah, and she should be pregnant, you know, with that much feed. Uh, yeah, you're right, exactly. Um, that's that's uh, 12 pounds a day. And are, are you riding it two or three hours a day? Because if you're riding two or three hours a day, 12 pounds is not so bad. But if you're not, back it off, okay? Number one, that hay makes your mule feel, makes you feel good, okay? But a hay belly is like a... Beer belly, a beer belly, yep, yep. And so the more you feed the hay, the more your belly's gonna grow. But if you're, you're gonna feed that kind of feed that much, you gotta put the exercise on them. Now, if it's she's standing 
and she weighs roughly about 850 pounds and she's standing five days out of the week, then I would start cutting it back and starting to see changes. Uh, it's okay for you and her to go for a walk. Uh, then both of you lose a pound or so. Awesome. Thank you for asking that question, Jackie. Always good to hear from you. Michelle is watching from Colorado. Lots of Colorado folks here today. Must be getting, well, she says it's a warm day, about 75 degrees, but at least eight inches of snow is coming this week and spring is always strange here. I'll tell you what, Steve, I think I told you this. Last year, I convinced my wife to take a vacation with me. Not that she needed to be convinced to take a vacation with me. Okay, she loves me. Thank you very much. She needed to be convinced that it was going to be okay for us to leave our three boys for a weekend. And so I finally convinced her, hey, let's do this. I've got I've got you on my companion pass with Southwest. We'll hop on a plane. We'll go to, let's go to Colorado. So we put Colorado on the schedule and we were going to stay at the uh, the Gaylord Lodge there about 15 minutes away from the airport. Fantastic lodge. I just, I really enjoyed it. It was great. Well, we get there and we land and I thought, hey, it's the second or third weekend in March. We're going to be good. Snow is, snow's done for the year. Well, we wound up getting snowed in and it was so much snow that we could not leave on our scheduled Sunday. Like Friday, we knew it was going to be that much snow. So all day Saturday, it snowed. There's no way we would have been able to leave on Sunday. We were not able to get out of Colorado until Tuesday. I remember that. Yep. And so it was, uh, so my wife was freaking out, but of course we have my parents back here. We have her parents back here. We got the people who, you know, love our boys just as much as we do. And so our boys were loving it. They were living yeah. it up and they were like, this is great. We don't have mom grandma and dad. And around. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Grandma and grandpa giving us TV time and Oreos all day long. We love this. Yeah. <laughs> Sandra was a little bit more, are they okay? Are they going to be all right? Do they think that I'm like, they're fine. They're having the time of their lives and we should be too. And so we enjoyed those extra couple days in Colorado. It was a lot of fun. Matter of fact, I need to get her back out there. That was great. That yeah. Gay, the Gaylord Res Resort. That was awesome. Um, I all right. Take a for a little tour. Where are you guys going? We're going to go up to, to the Chiricahua Mountains. Where's that? Down south by, Wil by Wilcox. I did not know that. Uh, what oh, what do you is, expect out there? I'm going to send you some pictures. I mean, it is at, not only is it awesome riding, okay, but uh, we're not going to take any any livestock. Of course, I don't have any, but we're not going to take. We're going to do that. But we are going to simply be in the car in Susan's car, uh, and we're going to have Jess, and we're just going to drive through the Chiricahua Mountain Range. It's awesome. absolutely gorgeous, two lane, very small road. You're so small of a road, you cannot take a trailer on it or a motor home. Okay. And uh, so we're going to, we're going to spend uh, a day or two, maybe in Wilcox and go through some of them old towns, uh, some of the old stores and stuff. And then we're going to go up to Chiricahua. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so do you remember when we went to Vail back in uh, 2019, I think it was? Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun. <laughs> we, we didn't have the correct, um, the correct address when we went down there. And so we were supposed to go to Vail, which is very close off of the, the I-10 down south of, southeast of Tucson. Well, we just kept driving. And we got about an hour and a half south of Vail, maybe, or maybe like an hour south of Vail. And I think, I don't know if it was Sonoida or where it was, but I'll tell you what, Steve, that was a part of Arizona that I had never seen before. Gorgeous. Yep. Gorgeous. Yep. Rolling hills, green everywhere. I was like, I cannot believe this is Arizona. Arizona yep. has so many different like landscape topography, just unlike any other place that I've seen ever. So y'all, there you go. Come on out. Enjoy Arizona. Uh, wait until... October and then come out and you can enjoy Arizona from top to bottom. Y'all will love it a lot. Okay, folks want us to get back to answering the mule questions. That's why we're here. But you know what? We run this show. We'll talk. We love Arizona. We'll talk about it a little bit here and there. Uh, let's see here. Grateful Heart. Juliana Sifter watching from Big Bear City, California. 71 degrees, sunny and beautiful here 
today. Good to have you here, Juliana. We've got Vicky says, yeah, oh, our friends saying, yes, I have seen that shoeing or that picking up the foot a few times. Uh, Shara says, no, I haven't seen it. Shara, you got to watch it. It's going to be great. Dave O'Brien has watched it. Linda has watched it. Michelle says there is a product called Snake Away. It's a powder that you put on the ground and snakes won't cross it. I wonder if that uh, I wonder if that uh, that works for uh, people calling me saying my car warranty has expired. I wonder if there's like a, a powder that I can put on the uh, on yeah, the phone line and people won't cross that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Take a lariat rope when you sleep on the ground and put a lariat rope around you, then the snakes won't cross over the lariat rope. There you go. Lariat Rope and Snake Away. For more tips on avoiding reptiles, every Wednesday, 3 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time. Uh, let's see. Carol is watching from St. James, Missouri. Sunny in 83. Leroy, 74 and rainy with uh, thunderstorms tonight in Camden, Ohio. Uh, Myra says, yes, she's seen it. Hey, Amy's here. Hey, we were just talking to you, Amy. Good to have you here. So glad you came in and hung out with us. Uh, Georgia, hot and humid, she says. Uh, let's see. Carol has the question, how do I correct my donkey feet if they are contracted? Nah, donkey's feet are very hard to, to, to fix because that's the problem is the donkey's foot is the worst foot on an equine because they're already real small. But the biggest thing you can do is you can keep them trimmed very short. That'll help a lot. And if your farrier knows anything at all about it, he can take a pair of shoes and he can uh, take some like pony shoes and he can make them work to, to take care of it. But look at your foot. The back of the foot should be wide, okay? And I'm showing it as this big. I don't know how big your donkey is, but you shouldn't have a hard frog, folks. That's really important. A hard frog. Remember what the frog does? It pumps blood up and down the leg. That's why I tell farriers, leave that frog alone. Don't touch it. You know, it'll shed on its own. It'll do just fine on its own. But one way you're going to know is how hard is that frog? Then next thing is how wide is that heel? You're going to find the front ones will be wider than the rear ones. Important are feet and shoes. Well, if you don't have a foot, you don't have a mule. So lots of great questions about feet and uh, making sure that those are well taken care of. Larry's watching from Eastern Kentucky. Hey, David Pengelly, Mr. Coffee himself is uh, is uh, here. Manchester, Georgia. Y'all go get yourself some come along coffee on the muleranch.com website. Michelle says it, ha it has snowed in July where I live. That is the normal here, she says. Leroy's got a question. Should mules be fed sweet feed or not, no. along with grass hay in the morning and night? If so, how much? So no. No, that's no. quick because here's the deal. Sweet feed, okay. Wait, what is sweet that's, feed? Sweet feed, what they do is they put molasses in with oats and corn and this sort of thing. Got it, okay. okay. And, and you, you're talking about a lot of carbs these mules don't need. If you're going to feed them uh, a, a, a something for energy, then you feed whole oats and you only feed the oats when you're getting ready to ride so that that would be the extra octane that they have to be able to get them to, to, uh, to have the energy. That also helps the top line. A lot of your top lines are not very good because people don't feed them according to their use. Folks, if they're standing, feed them one feed. If you're using them, feed them another feed. I'm getting ready to ride, and I'm, I know I'm gonna be riding two to four hours. I'll take uh, a coffee can of whole oats, I'll put it in my morale, I'll put it on their nose, and I'll let them eat while I am saddling. When I'm done saddling and I'm ready to ride, I pull the morale off. They've eaten all the whole oats they need, and we go. That's not only going to give them the energy, but it'll keep them from burning. It'll burn fat rather than burn muscle because you need that top line, okay? But the other thing is with that, 
it's really easy, I mean really easy, to colic a mule or a donkey with sweet, sweet pea. Uh, so many people have told me about their colic problems. And I say, well, how, when did you start feeding sweet feed? Well, how did you know? Well, because of the colic problems. Their system, folks, uh, you know, with having the donkey side of them, especially, uh, uh, not only will they, will they grass founder, but really easy. It's not good on their intestines and this sort of thing. So, folks, when Steve says, I've had folks call me, or when Steve says, folks have told me, um, it's not hyperbole. It, it literally happens. I have, I have heard Steve on the phone with folks saying exactly what he would say. Oh, I've seen this happen. And Steve like, yep, that happened. Or I know someone who had this happen. What do you think of that? Oh yeah, that's what will happen. You know, broke tail from riding with a crouper. Yes. Steve will tell you, I know people who have had their tail broke on their animals from riding with a crouper. And just recently I was hearing Steve talk and they said, yeah, I won't ride with a crouper. I saw someone break, have their tail yep. broken. Yep. So it's not, it's not like one person. And Steve says, Oh, people call me and tell me that's only one or two people. Like it's a repeated thing over and over and over. So it's not hyperbole here. We're giving you the best information we've got. Uh, Linda has the question, Steve, can you tell me how to explain to horse people why a mule is so much smoother riding than a horse? Also, how to explain why or how they cover so much more ground at a walk than a horse of the same height? They just think I'm opinionated, but I know there must be a psycho or physiological explanation due to the way mules are put together. What would you say there? Okay, watch your donkeys and you'll see it. It's called a single foot. Instead of the left front going and the right rear going, it's right side, left side, right side, left side. So they're actually shuffling, it's called a single foot. And they get that from their daddy, the donkey. Uh, it's, it's, it's an awesome ride and it makes it very comfortable. Uh, and if you're not getting that awesome ride, you also might wanna look and say, okay, do I have my front sense too tight or do I have my saddle too far forward? That might be another reason you're not getting an awesome ride, but that's the reason is they single foot and they get it from their daddy, the donkey. Awesome. Okay. Lee is watching. Good to have you here watching Lee from California. Uh, Kim says, if we just want to go watch, what are the best days to go to Bishop Mule Days for vendor and, vendors and events? Steve, you've been out there before. Do you know, it's been a while though. Do you know what the best days would be? You know, the best days for us, of course, we were the Packers was always Saturday and Sunday because they, we were the show that the, the Bishop uh, committee would always come to us and say, okay, you Packers, you're the show. You what people want to see because of the excitement and this sort of thing, uh, and and so uh, they you know they would save the the final packing for the very last hour you know so that you would keep more people there. Uh, it's I I can tell you this I haven't been there in a while, uh, but it, it has changed tremendously um, compared to when I was going. Uh, it's, it's not the same show. Uh, the show before was a lot of, uh, Packers, ranchers, uh, government, uh, people from, you know, Yosemite and, and, uh, Grand Canyon and things like this. In other words, they were full-time all around Packers, riders, and this sort of thing. And today we don't see that, unfortunately. Uh, when you go there, you're going to see hardly ever Britchin is written. You won't hardly see a Britchin. Uh, you, you, you'll see a lot of people riding without. Anyway, there's a lot of things that I'm not happy about that, that I see, but I can't change it. So uh, I can change you all one mule at a time. And that's what I'd like to do. It's awesome. Next question we got. This one was sent in um, <clears throat> from Clayton says, uh, Steve, my mule is foot shy and we have problems with her getting her feet taken care of by the farrier. Any tips to work with her to get past this would be greatly appreciated. I have a couple of your videos and a come along rope. Any tips to work with her on this to get it corrected would be greatly appreciated. What would you say they're foot shy? I've never heard that phrase. Is that just they're sensitive well, around their feet? It, yeah, it's just basically, you know, not being able to pick up their feet. Just while we were just talking about 15 minutes ago, Dave, about 
picking up the back feet, using the come along rope. Folks, you, if you've got problems with your meals, the come along rope is going to be your, your problem fixer. You kick them, first teach them to stand still and quiet, straight, straight. Then you teach them to move one step at a time. You'll see it in videos. Go around in a circle, go around in a circle, okay? Now, mules care more about their nose than they do their mouth. So if you want to tell them that their idea of not picking up a foot is a bad idea, you bump their nose. Bump, bump, bump. Ask the old man, okay? Uh, the video, Dave, that we have of me picking up the back feet would be a really good one for him. Uh, if he has my uh, come along rope, hopefully he's purchased the, the ground communication kit. And this is what's really important, folks. The ground communication kit. Okay. I don't push my stuff too often. And, and, but that's the most important thing that you as a mule owner, as a donkey owner should be using is that come along hitch for everything. I wouldn't even use that halter. Hang it on a nail and let it hang there. Get to where the mule trusts you. The mule wants to follow your lead with that come along rope. There shouldn't be any picking up feet problems. There shouldn't be any uh, veterinarian problems. Because if you use your come along rope correctly and consistently, you'll have a correct and consistent mule. Next question that we got, this one, this one came in about the come along rope. This one was from home and uh, I spoke with home. I thought I had gotten to this uh, before and home said, no, we didn't answer. And so I apologize. And, and so I just want to say to folks, if you're watching and you've sent in a question and I did not see it or I did not ask it, um, just bump me. It's not an intentional thing. Uh, we get hundreds uh, of messages every single week, and I do my best to keep track of them. And Steve does his best to get uh, back to folks. Uh, we're working really hard for you. And so uh, Home was very gracious and just told me, hey, no, nope, haven't heard back yet. But if you can't answer it, that'd be great. So I appreciate that, Home. Uh, so this one, <clears throat> it's a little bit longer, but uh, here we go. Uh, thanks for all your help and good advice, which is highly appreciated here in Europe. In Germany, mules are very rare and there are practically no mule trainers at all. So your free online Q and A's are really helpful. At the moment, I'm doing foundational work from the ground. I bought my mule in February this year. My main issue is that he is occasionally tearing loose at different circumstances. When the farrier stands there with the big pliers, when we go back to the paddock and there's still some beautiful grass over there, when he wants to come out, uh, check out another herd of horses, etc. So I cannot securely go out with him. I've got my come along rope now and it seems that I can handle those situations much better than before. My question is, what I, what can I additionally do in such situations? He's not suddenly trying to tear loose, but thinks about it before he decides to actually try it out. I know very well that it that's the case. He becomes restless, tries to come forward, turns away. Is there a way I is there any trick or sane way to deal with this to avoid him trying to break away in the first place? I tried leading in a circle to distract him, but that didn't turn out too well. He hit me in the hand with his hoof because I was too close to him at that moment. Still seems pretty uh, long. Feel free to short. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there you go. What would you say to home? So Holmes, it's your it's your timing, buddy. It's your timing, and just like any of you, okay. You know, uh, they said I hear people all the time say I was going south, and then all of a sudden I'm going north, okay, and I fell off. Well, it's your timing, not being able to feel it to know how quickly to make your movements. That's why you use the come along rope. The come along rope will not only make your mule be better, but it'll help you with your timing. That's really important. Your timing, really, really important. So uh, that's that's where I would really work at it is, is take him and use that come along rope. Uh, do the work that I show on the video. That's really important. How to get him to go around to the right and to the left. A lot of people get say, okay, now what's next? No, no, you really don't have it yet because you when they go around to the right and you see it in some of my videos, remember Dave where I was showing I'd get him to pick up one foot, then the next foot. That is when you're starting to control, folks. That is when you have true, true halter foundation training, okay? 
So when it comes down to leading them, hey, you're I'm 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 good with you, Holmes. You are you're catching it before they become a problem. And that's really important. Folks, you want to you want to feel them, catch it before it becomes a problem. Dave. Oh, Dave. Did I lose you? Sorry about that. I forgot to put my screen back up there. So next so. question comes in from Todd. We just got our first mule. He is unhandled. Worked with him yesterday. Started rubbing his neck and head for first time. He does not like his confined space uh, he's currently in. Uh, and to we get him leading and listening. Is there anything we can do to get him to settle down? He has not been castrated, which may be adding to the problem. We have horses around that he can also see and hear. What would you say here for Todd? The seeing and the hearing is that's okay. They can be it can be a corral away, not a big deal. Okay. But the brain surgery, i.e., castration, get it done yesterday. You can't get it done fast enough and the older that is they are the harder it is on them okay so castration i don't you know folks my wife our little mule that she had her, my wife's little mule spent 28 years in a small corral 10 by 20. did she go out and go riding yeah did she pull wagons yes you know uh you know yes you know she had lots to do but they do not need to be in a big pen. You cannot control them when you when you have a mule that you're building a foundation on or fixing a problem. It is it is super important that they're in a small pen. Ten by ten would be where I would start when it comes down to to building a foundation and work my way into a twenty by twenty. Ten by ten, then ten by twenty, then twenty by twenty. Awesome. Next question comes in from uh, David O'Brien. And uh, let me see if I can bring this up here. Tell me if you see this, Steve. Can you see that on your screen there? Yep. See okay. you. Yep. Yep. Okay. He says, my Molly is only a year old. She is out of a well-muscled quarter horse. To me, yeah. in these pictures, um, actually, I've got two. If I need to get the other one, I can. In these pictures, it looks like she will have a downhill slope from her rear to her withers. Is there enough of a slope to eventually need your downhill hip pad, or is it still too early to tell? I would say right now that I would uh, wait a little bit. Uh, it wouldn't hurt this particular mule to have a downhill hip pad. Um, bringing up the she, other one. I'm bringing up yeah. the other one right here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would definitely go with the downhill hip pad. And what the deal downhill hip pad is, is thicker on the front and smaller toward the back, and it helps bring the front of the saddle. The bar is still going to fit. It's going to fit, but and that's really important. But the problem is, it's the way the mule's made. Now, if I was going to build a, tra a saddle tree and the saddle for that mule, the front of that saddle would have to be this thick in order to be able to be thick enough to be to fit the mule okay but but that's impossible uh, not only is it going to be ugly when you build a saddle for it but you, it's only going to fit one mule that's it so uh, i developed the pad the bar fits the back correctly then the pad brings the front of the saddle up and we're good christine is watching she says uh heart 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 love my mule mentor so Right back at you, Christine. Thank oh, you. Oh, Christina, she's she's something else. That little gal. I, she was at one of my clinics. Oh, what's it been, Christina? Uh, eight years ago, something like that, you know. And uh, great gal. She and then she was at one of my clinics in uh, in Tennessee at, at one of the expos. And uh, she's got she just loves mules, but unfortunately, the way her life is set up and this sort of thing. She can't really spend the time around the mules the way she wants, but yeah, she's a great gal. That's awesome. Good to have you here, Christine. Jackie from Tennessee is watching 86, low humidity, and that is a win 
of the Midwest. Jack from Johannesburg is watching 65 degrees and sunshine. We've got another international, Kevin, here from north of the 49th up here in Alberta, Canada. Don International, good to have you here, Kevin. Uh, Linda says, Dave, sweet feed is like Cracker Jack, so only feed it when you take your mule to the ball game. Da -da -tsh, all day. There we go. Good to have you here, Linda. Uh, Matt is watching from Rhode Island, where it is sunny and 63. Roger is watching from Milan, New York, where it is sunny and 70. Mr. Johnson, Johnson's Taxidermy. Norman, Oklahoma, 91 degrees. Jackie says, I just bought a saddle from Steve and just wanted to say that he's been so helpful to me. He has called me and emailed me to see how I was doing with the fit. Glad to hear that, Jackie. Uh, good job, Steve. Keep on. <laughs> well, you know how important it is to me, Dave. You I know? do. I mean, it's, you know, folks, I don't have any meals here anymore, and so I'm happy to help you out. The only times I'm, I'm around the meals is when we're um, working cattle and stuff, so... Uh, I, I, you know, I miss him in a lot of ways, but you take like Jackie here, you know, she, she sent me pictures and that's what I do to help. She had questions and, and I, I'm going to pester you to death until you get it right. You know, <laughs> it's not that hard and I, I'm here and I'm, and I'll drop the F bomb on you free, free. There you go. Free baby. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Steve will pick up the phone. Hey, this is Steve Edwards, and on the other end, oh my gosh, is this really Steve Edwards? I can't believe I'm talking to Steve Edwards. Pant legs. Yeah. Or put, puts on his pants one leg at a time, folks. Yep. One leg at a time. Uh, yeah, so, savior. yeah, there we go. Uh, I, tell you, I tell you what, Steve, <laughs> life is humbling. When I think I'm doing real good and I think I've just figured it out, that's the morning that I realize I put my shirt on backwards and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't even put my shirt on straight. So uh, life has a way of keeping you humble and uh, we're all good with that, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, let's see here. Linda says, single foot, I have a donkey. I never paid attention to her walk. Wow. Thank you. Everyone's always learning new things, Linda. Bill is sharing to Mules of Ohio, 65 degrees and rain. And if y'all want Steve to come out to Ohio, that's the man that you need to talk to right there. Bill, we were talking about you last week. I don't know if you saw the replay, but folks were saying they want to get there uh, and connect with you to make sure Steve comes out. So y'all connect with Bill, uh, Mules of Ohio. Uh, Linda says, so does single foot gait come naturally to donkeys and mules? I see videos on how to train your horse to do single foot. Well, now there's a difference between single foot and getting getting one to be like a Tennessee walker, okay? And there's also a difference when it comes down to uh, foxtrotters. But yes, it is natural. If you The biggest problem, folks, <laughs> is you're not letting go of the reins. You're holding on tight. You brace on the reins. You're worried they're going to make a mistake. I don't know, whatever it may be, but here's the deal. And this is really important. If you want them to walk fast, put your hands down, use your legs, right brain, left brain, and let them pick up the speed and go. You know, they can rock and roll. These, these donkeys are wonderful. But just watch them. When they step, right side, right rear, right front, left side, left side left front, left rear. It's pretty cool to watch them. This one came in from Catherine, uh, sent this one in via Facebook Messenger. I have a Jenny I bought from a cattle auction. She'd never been handled or had any type of human interaction since she was born. She was born and raised with cows, and honestly, she kind of acts like one. I have had her for over a year with hardly any progress using other people's methods of uh, patience and kindness. Up until recently, when I threw it all out of the window, uh, have, I, have I made progress whatsoever? She had been too used to getting her way, and she has absolutely no respect for anyone. Sounds like my five-year-old. She was and still is very violent and mean. Well, my five-year-old's okay in that area. She has tried to kick my brains out over five times. She has tried to bite me and run me over too. She has never reared, but has definitely stomped on my feet many times. It takes some persistence, but I can now pick up her feet, get a halter on her without too much of a fight, and she is green halter broke. Honestly, I wouldn't even call it green. She doesn't want to do any of it, but she does it begrudgingly. Recently, I managed to sit astride her and 
She never bucked or kicked me out, but she didn't move either. Obviously, she has gotten sick where she was younger and never foundered in her feet, so she'll never be sound enough to ride, but she would make good livestock guardian. Anyways, I just don't know why people would say that force uh, and making them to do what you want them won't work when it's the only thing that's worked for me. I tried everything. Treats. She won't take anything but a large wad of hay out of your hand. I tried patience. No matter how much I calmly persisted, she always managed to have her way. I tried bonding. Yeah, I kind of want to laugh just thinking about how well that one worked. <laughs> I can hear it here, Catherine. I can hear it. Months and months of work every day. Nothing to show for it. Why? I need help, sir. And you are literally my last hope. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. She is way too aggressive, and all she wants to do is be left alone to eat her grain and hay and do as she pleases. Sound like the teenagers these days, doesn't it? <sighs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> no joke. Okay, so I hear so many account. things coming out here, Steve, and the, the one thing at the very end, I think just underscores a big piece of what people get wrong with the mule and the donkey. All she wants is to be left alone. Like yep. that's what these animals want yeah. more than anything else is to be yep. left alone. That's what I've learned from you. What would you say there to Catherine? Well, Catherine, you're going to have to take and put them in a small pen, 10 by 10, 10 by 10. Folks, when they're in a 10 by 10 pen, they have to depend upon you. They have to do that. Okay. So a 10 by 10 stall that's in the beginning okay the come along rope it sounds like you're already coming a long ways and i'm i'm proud of you for going this far my goodness being bit and kicked and everything is still going congratulations but get the come along rope on that that donkey and life will change anybody that uses that come along rope you they'll maybe they can write in and tell her tell her now uh dave but Anybody uses that come along hitch will see life altering changes in these donkeys and mules. Yeah. So Catherine, um, Steve's the expert. I'm the one who's just watched it all happen. And the come along rope is, is going to be a, it's, it's going to be what will allow you to communicate what you want to communicate to that animal. And uh, you've already heard on this broadcast. If, if you haven't go back and watch it, uh, but you've already heard about timing. You need to have your timing. The second that that animal decides that it wants to do something, that's when you bump on that come along rope and let them know that, no, you will only be comfortable if you stand straight and quiet. Second the animal looks, bump back. You got to work on your timing. And it's these little things that I've seen that lead to big results. You're not going to get the big glorious results that you're wanting right away. It's going to be these little steps that are going to help you along the way to come along rope and get the problem mule video watch those and you're great throwing all that other stuff out because that means you're at the point where you're really going to be able to accept the training that comes in here and the problem mule video is where you want to start with that come along rope and uh, really there's a lot of other things we could say but that's really that's really what we've seen uh, here are a few comments on the come along rope uh, for you, Catherine, just so you know that you're not alone. Works one. These are these are comments you can find on the Mule Ranch website. These are reviews from people who have purchased. Works wonders. Only used it four days. Mule responds great to it. She's learning a lot. This one's from uh, you, Eileen. The come along rope worked really well. I had great response from Smokey. After using Steve's method of ask, tell, and demand, all I need to do was lightly pick up on the rope and my mule knew what I wanted him to do right away. The rope is well made, sturdy, delivery was fast too. Uh, we've got the come along is a very useful means of communication to a mule. My mules don't act up in confusion as they are clear that I am the herd leader and they're going to do what I ask them to do. The videos are great and the technical support is fantastic too. Come along rope is a great tool for keeping my 17 month old mammoth's attention. She responds immediately to my cue. There's 53 total. Y'all can go and check out. And I think wow. every last one of them is a five star. I don't think any of them are lower than five stars, and it really is the come along rope that can make the difference. Um, let's go back over here to the chat. Rory is watching from Southwestern Ohio. Say hey to Bill Mule to Bill Mules of Ohio. Uh, Lydia is watching from Ontario, Canada. You know what that means, Lydia? International. 
We got Jane watching, says, thank you for sharing. Great advice, lots of common sense. Steve, we should have Jane email Susan and Sandra. They need to hear this. Uh, <laughs> Linda says, when is your mule too old to ride? Assuming there's no injury or il illness, just plain old age with good care and nutrition, can I ride Theo into his 30s? Of course, I'll be in oh, my yeah. 90s by then, but don't worry about that. Just ride. Yeah, they'll be fine. You know, I, uh, I've... Uh, I've seen these old mules do good. Just ride them. They'll enjoy it. They like getting out, you know, uh, enjoy, ride. My wife, my wife's mule paid, uh, passed away at 28, but she got a really unique cancer and that was the reason she, she died. But other than that, I know of, of mules that have been close to 40 years old, still using them. Bobby uh, is watching, says, hello, Steve. I have a mule that would trailer fine, but now he will not load. I spent four hours trying. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe that. That's so frustrating, Bill or Bobby. I spent four hours trying to help load him in my bot and watched the trailer loading video. I used the come along hitched and tapped on top of his butt like the video showed. I'm just kind of wondering if I'm doing something wrong or is there another trick? I do not want to use feed to try and get him into the trailer. What would you say here to Bobby? He has the trailer loading video, so that's great. Steve? It's your timing, Bobby. It's just timing, all right? You know, watch the video, how I prepared the mule before we did the trailer. Now, also remember, during this time, this finger right here had had a knife go through it, and uh, it was bleeding a lot, and it was very painful while I was doing this video. So I was literally doing it one handed. That's one of the reasons you'll see me toward the end. I was kind of losing my strength in this left hand. And that's one of the reasons you'll see how I kind of went up through a loop and come back. I didn't tie it solid, but then how I was able to kind of control the mule. So it's just going to be your timing partner. That's going to be it. Now, also remember, you don't have to get all done in one day. I, uh, I what did it take Dave about? two hours to do to get him to load in that trailer if i remember right yeah uh, it was it was probably 45 minutes to an hour and five minutes of ground foundation training and then it was probably about i don't know 15 or 20 minutes of working to get them in and then you did it a couple more times yeah so it's going to be your timing partner the come along works okay but do the groundwork first and then get your timing if folks that's with any of this stuff, any of this, your timing and how your timing works. That's what's really important. Great question there, Bobby. Uh, Dave O'Brien says, thank you. Herschel is watching. 82 degrees in Lao today. Good to have you here. Thanks for making it, Herschel. Lee is watching. Yep, Steve called. Good talking to him. Isn't it, though, Lee? Uh, Yolanda's here, which means we are in the Netherlands, which means we have gone national about the saddling. I found out that my mule is something special. Now, I mu my mom said the same thing about me. Now, I must place the saddle two fingers behind the scapula and leave the front cinch loose like it was like a fist wide space, any tighter, she gets very upset. The back cinch, I can just, I can just tie it that my index finger still gets between the cinch and her belly. Any tighter, she gets very upset and the breast collar and britchin are adjusted again. Britchin higher up and breast collar one hole tighter and she is doing great. That is Yolanda taking what we teach here and then making it work for her mule. So good to hear you, Yolanda. Thank you. Um, Dave sa Dave O'Brien says the ground foundation kit made all the difference for me. It's legit. Thank you, David. Uh, Linda says temperament. Catherine's question brings tears to my eyes. I am so grateful for my boring, peaceful Theo. His idea of being evil is just to pretend you are invisible and walk away. You have to be ready on the come along and anticipate his French exit. Myra says, I found that using the come along rope made it possible to establish a working relationship with my difficult mule. Uh, Rory says, rode my Palomino mule till he was 33, then packed him till he was nearly 40. Uh, Bill says, I'm having trouble being able to approve new member requests on Mules of Ohio Facebook page for over a month or longer. Anyone that is interested in the clinic might try going to Mules of Indiana for now to get any information I can offer. We can't figure out what's wrong with the Ohio Facebook page. Any information would be helpful. Thanks. So y'all go find Bill on Mules of Indiana while Facebook gets its act together for the Mules of Ohio. 
Um, I got another question here. And if anyone has any last minute questions, put them in there. This question comes from Chrissy. Uh, sent this one in on Facebook. Says, um, oh, let me see. Where did I put it? Good morning. I love your Facebook page and your website. I got my first mule. Hey, well, let's let's give a Glock and spiel to that. My mule is 24 months. The previous owner had ridden him 15 times around the pen, but I don't plan on riding him till he's three. I just trail ride in the mountains here in North Carolina. What are your views of Pony and him on the trails with my mare? Well, Pony him is good. That's, you know, not a lot of it. But here's the deal, folks. Always want to check their knees. The biggest problem with riding them too young is you don't, their knees or cartilages are not coming together correctly. And that's the biggest reason you want to ride them when they get about two years or six months on average, uh, when their cartilages are closed. Go to your veterinarian, have them look at it, and see if you see if the cartilages are closed. All right, that does it for today. Folks, thanks so much for hanging out with us. It was really good to have you here today. Uh, Steve and I have travel plans the last several weeks, and then we've got some travel plans coming up. So be sure to continue to tune in on Wednesdays. Uh, we'll have a few live shows here and there, and we'll have some awesome pre-produced shows that include live footage, well, footage taken live from Steve's Mule and Donkey Clinics over the last several years. This is stuff that you might not have seen on YouTube or stuff that's never been before released on YouTube. It's a lot of fun, uh, but more than anything, it gives you a great opportunity uh, to continue to connect with one another. There's something that is just so great beyond uh, hanging out with y'all here today. It is hearing that y'all are connecting with one another outside of this event. So please, if you've got some folks that have been showing themselves to be in your area uh, in the comment section, reach out to them. Uh, just say hello and uh, just get to know the neighbors that are around you and uh, see if you can make some good uh, good connections with folks who have maybe experienced some things that you're going through or maybe uh, you can share what you've been through to help them get some resorts. Of course, we'll, we'll keep showing up here each week and on muleranch.com. Y'all can go there, find all of the videos um, that Steve has available for sale. But more than that, you can find all of the free resources uh, trainings, uh, instructions, articles, everything uh, that can help you gain the trust of your animals and get results when you go out there and uh, do whatever it is you feel like doing with them. Steve, anything you want to say before we're all done here today? Well, kind of as a reminder, we got Bill there with that clinic that he'd like to put together in Ohio. Uh, usually that equine affair has been a good, good clinic for me in the past, uh, and I love going to that. But now Bill uh, has got a really nice place and we should have a really, we can have us an awesome get together. But the other one uh, is going to be up and coming is Labor Day weekend up in Superior, Wyoming, or, or Montana, Superior, Montana. It's a couple hours away from Missoula and we're going to have a great clinic there. We got, it's beautiful. Uh, you went, you're not going to believe the trails to ride and things like this. The camping is going to be, uh, uh, there's, there's, it's going to be, there's not any electric or anything like that, but so you'll be camping uh, with using your generators or your flashlights or whatever you got. But anyway, it's gonna be a great clinic. It's gonna be really nice up there. And we're gonna be doing driving. And we're gonna be doing some packing. We're gonna be doing some riding. We're gonna be doing some problem clinic. It's gonna, it's gonna be awesome. Any right cowboy now, church? Gonna be doing any days. cowboy church? Of course, we're gonna be doing cowboy church. Absolutely. That's my main thing right there. You know, yes, sirree. You know, the uh, mule I, training is just a cover for the cowboy church. That's right. Given, only the people here right now know that secret. The mule training is just the cover for the cowboy church. Exactly. Get you in the door. Thank you, everyone, for hanging out with us. Uh, so great. We, attention is the hardest thing to come by because we only have so much of it. And there's lots of things begging for it. And so we know that you could put your attention in so many different areas. Uh, the fact that y'all are here today, and if you're watching on the replay, the fact that you chose to spend a little bit of your time and attention here with us, um, it's really humbling. Uh, it's, it's, the greatest, uh, it's the greatest commodity that you've got. And, uh, and so we don't take that for granted. That's why we do our best to show up each and every week and give you our best. And we'll keep doing that. Y'all have been great too and uh, would love to... Uh, 
uh, continue to see you show up week after week. Um, Steve, how about we do this again? All right, buddy. I'd be looking forward to it. See you then. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Tell all 